Roll for random encounter. Very good. Okay. Okay, and welcome to another episode of the Random Encounter Show. I'm Def Stalker 5, being joined again by Steve, but this time he's bringing a legendary troll to the mix, Ken St. Andre. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad to have you both on the show. Happy to be here. Yeah, I'm here. <laughs> All right, what are we going to talk about today, Steve? Well, we thought uh, you haven't interviewed Ken yet, so I thought uh, you could start by interviewing Ken for a bit, and then uh, you know, once you get the basics, we can then uh, we can talk about the Kickstarter, I suppose. I've got some art to show you guys. We can. And, and that relates to what some differences that we have between this book and some of the previous things Ken's worked on. So that was my, that was my thoughts. Excellent. And uh, Ken needs no introduction, so I'm going to let him introduce himself. You've got a, a multi-award winning author, first RPG generation author in front of you here. So let's let him talk. Okay, well, I really love the Chevy Chase introduction. Uh, from Saturday Night Live. Hello, it's Saturday <laughs> Night Live, only it's really Thursday afternoon live. Um, I'm Ken St. Andre, and you're not. <laughs> uh, Chevy Chase did that first, and he did it well. Um, do you know the classic origin of Tunnels and Trolls story? Tell us. Yeah, let's hear. All right. Rick Loomis, who is the uh, central point of all Arizona gaming, uh, he started everything, or he was involved in everything. Uh, and we all sprang out from Rick Loomis's uh, desire not to have to work during life, but to just run game companies and play games for uh, the last 50 years of his life after he got out of the army. One way or the other, yes. So, um, we knew each other back in the day because uh, Terry Ballard and I started the first Phoenix Science Fiction Club. And all the great science fiction conventions and stuff that you see running in Phoenix today happened because Terry and I organized a science fictional group uh, to meet on Friday nights uh, way back at the dawn of time. Part of that group was Rick Loomis. And Rick Loomis had, had games at his house on Friday nights. So um, I would frequently go to those. I had been hearing about a new game called Dungeons and Dragons. It sounded like my kind of thing. I loved Conan and Tarzan, Fritz Leiber, the Grey Mouser and Popper. I know more about swords and sorcery than anybody else in the country now that uh, Lynn Carter is dead. <laughs> but, uh, so it sounded like my kind of thing. I had to see it. Didn't exist in Phoenix. One night I went to play games at Rick's house uh, generally, we would be playing Risk, and I got there too late. The game was full and was going strong, but somebody, I can't remember who, had brought along his first white box edition of Dungeons & Dragons. I sat down. I started reading it. Uh, I read it for about two hours. I skimmed through the bo boring parts, uh, and when I was done, I said, what a great idea. What a horrible way <laughs> to do it. I will make my own game, a game I can play, a game that makes sense. And I went home and I created Tunnels and Trolls. Yeah. And uh, let's remind the audience, uh, what year was that? Was that 74 or 75? It was 1975, about April of 1975. Dungeons and Dragons first started being heard of around the country around November or December of 1974. And uh, one more question I have for you. With Rick Loomis uh, going to his house for these gaming nights, was that before he opened the store for Flying Buffalo Incorporated? No. Well, hard to say. Flying Buffalo was a company already. Right. Rick had stores at various times during his career. Sometimes there was a store, sometimes there wasn't. It was never a continuous thing. I don't think he had a store then, though. I don't think he had it then either. Yeah. I don't think um, he had that. So no, it was it was really pretty early, you know. It was 
1975. Right. So, you know, just in case anybody's wondering, uh, most everybody in the world that I know of credits Ken St. Andre and Tunnels and Trolls as being the second role playing game in the world to exist. We're number two and we try harder. Maybe <laughs> not to exist. I, I'm a, with a librarian. And I'm oh, well, let's just say to be published then. To be published. There is a difference between existing sure. and being published. True. Yeah, that's sure. true. Because I beat A.R. Barker and Empire of the Petal thrown into publication by about a month. Yeah, and, you know, to be fair, Dungeons and Dragons wasn't technically the first role-playing game to exist. It came from a game called the Bernsteins from, what was it, Chicago, I believe, if you studied anything about the history, but I don't know. <laughs> Dungeons and Dragons was basically miniatures. Sure. Uh, played around Castle Greyhawk with Dave Arneson and his group. Uh, and the whole point was to play miniatures. You move your little soldiers and your troops around. Sure, it, it evolved from the chainmail rules. So. It was uh, chainmail was rules that they developed to do medieval miniatures. Right. Uh, when I was in high school back in 1967, I was playing uh, toy soldiers miniatures with my friend Mike Waters. Uh, we had uh, little cardboard houses. We had our tanks and we had our rubber soldiers. And uh, he'd be the Germans, I'd be the Americans, and we'd uh, stay up all night and roll dice and shoot at each other. Uh, crawling around the floor playing miniatures games but it wasn't role play right by the time dungeons and dragons came out um dave arneson had pretty much turned it into role playing uh but it was still basically a miniatures game with the, some role playing added onto it tunnels and trolls was meant to be a role playing game from day one Miniatures are totally unimportant. I still think they're totally unimportant, although so many people love them uh, that we cater to them anyway. Yeah. Um, the um, uh, Dungeons and Dragons came from a long tradition of miniature war games sure. uh, with a fill-up of role-playing put on top. Pedals and Trolls, which was my game, came from a long tradition of fantasy literature, comic books, it was meant to be all role played from the beginning. Right. And and I love the fact that Tunnels and Trolls, even though it came out after right after Dungeons and Dragons, it was still very unique from Dungeons and Dragons. It was similar because it was fantasy and there was role playing elements, but the approach was completely unique on it. I'd like to think so. Uh, still took more ideas from Dungeons and Dragons than I wanted to, but um I was young. I was new to all this. Nobody had any other models to work from. Uh, as Tunnels and Trolls has developed over the years, I've tried to make it more and more distinct and separate from Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, at least at the very beginning, the saving throw concept was different and the combat aspect was different. And furthermore, the general way we treated players and uh, people in the game was different. There was no male bias in the game. There was no special rules for rolling up female versions of anything. You rolled up a character, you made it whatever you wanted, male or female. Yeah, you just got to pick. Do I want to play a female character or a male character? I did that a thousand times playing Tunnels and Trolls, You're right? Right. Sure. So uh, I made Tunnels and Trolls to be a role playing game. Now, once I understood the concept, that I wanted to play, you know, and we've been playing it or modifications of it ever since. In 1976, Howard Thompson came along and said, Ken, would you design a role-playing game for me and metagaming? I said, yeah, I've got an idea. It's kind of the flip side of uh, Tunnels and Trolls. What if you didn't play the good guys in the game? What if you got to play the monsters? And from that came Monsters, Monsters. Uh -huh. And Monsters, Monsters is my main and favorite game today. Uh, as you see, having been named the Troll God and, uh, and becoming a champion for trolls, real trolls, not internet trolls, those backbiting <laughs> goblins. Uh, nobody understands what a real troll is. You have to go to Norway or 
Denmark to understand what a real troll is. Um, trolls are respected and loved in Iceland, Norway, Sweden, Denmark. Uh, they're powerful nature spirits. They're not little petty, uh, sniveling um, argufiers, the way you see uh, people being called trolls on the internet. Uh, in the Middle Ages, trolls were feared. Uh, and they were not feared because they would badmouth you at court. Uh, they were feared because uh, they could crush you with one blow of their fist. So, trolls should be respected and feared, not uh, belittled and uh, niggled. Uh, damn Mattel for creating their little troll gods with the hair flying up in the air. <laughs> <laughs> On the uh, internet, the, 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 using that word for people who are basically idiots. Yes, and the jerks. internet for, you know, uh, making trolls uh, yeah. the arch bad guys of uh, online communications. Yeah. yeah. And we can blame uh, Tolkien a little bit, too, for his portrayal of the trolls in The Hobbit. <laughs> there you go. Well, they were kind of dumb, you know, but uh, we can also uh, bless Tolkien because Tolkien gave me the idea that trolls could be living stone. So sure. I always imagined that those guys, you know, uh, turned back into uh, flesh and blood trolls, you know, as soon as the sun went down and then gained a new ability to be rock-like ever afterwards. Maybe so. That's so that, that brings us a nice segue to, to you know, uh, what, you know, what wants to do, uh, us doing the, the, the repeat of it. Ken got the rights back years ago. And then, um, you know, before Rick passed away, we had talked about doing uh, the Monsters, Monsters book as a separate thing. I remember you saying to Rick, I want to do it as a, a, my own thing at this point. And Rick gave you the okay for that. He said, well, yeah, you can. So, you know, and that's, that led us to the Kickstarter, the last Kickstarter that, you know, Rick and I did, or Ken Rick, and I did. Steve and I did. Yeah, yeah, Steve and I did. Rick's did. last Kickstarter was the Deluxe Tunnels and Trolls with us back in 2015. He might have done a one for nuclear war or something afterwards. Yeah, he did that. He was he was involved with the Mercenary Spies and Private Eyes one at the beginning too, but then he got too ill to finish it. So sure. that was when I started. I kind of took over running that, making sure it all got done. But Rick Rick started all the, that last Kickstarter. Um. Anyway, so as probably most of you know, we're now got a new Kickstarter going, which is the one for uh, which I talked about previously in my interview with. Uh, Death Stalker, and that's the the monstrary of Zimrala. So, uh, Ken, do you want to tell them where that idea came from and what you you know? It's it's because uh, Steve and certain other fans are just never satisfied. <laughs> they keep saying, "But we want a best Jerry," and I keep saying, well, "We talked about fifty different kinds of monsters in the DT and T rules." True enough. Uh, and but we want a best Jerry. We want all of the monsters. I said, you can't have all of the monsters. There's too many. You'll never catch up with all of them. But we want a best Jerry. Uh, you see where I was going with this Death Stalker. I was going to do something that actually looks like a best Jerry. Uh, I did, you know, Troll God's Top 20 uh, or Terrible 20 uh, as a booklet on Drive Through RPG. You can right. buy it there. You can find 20 original monsters that I designed just to make my best Jerry fans happy. Are they happy? No, they want a best Jerry. Uh. <laughs> I think I think that you know, for so many of the role playing systems, all have that. You know, they have player manuals and best Jerry's, and you know, and so I think the one thing people who are, who enjoy playing Tunnels and Trolls, and I'll, I'll have have always said they would like to see a best Jerry, and so um, you know, with with Ken owning the rights to Monsters Monsters, what better time to to go ahead and proceed? You know, it's like, well, right. that'll make a great project. What better time indeed. And while we're at it, let's not just uh, do it in the Tunnels and Trolls universe because it doesn't own, belong to me anymore. It belongs to WebSphere. Yeah. And I wish them all the best luck in the world with it. Uh, but I still own the Monsters Monsters rights. They're not the same game. And I made this clear from the beginning. They're related. They're cousins, they have the same creator, but 
uh, they're no more the same game than, you know, uh, a brother and a sister here, born of the same parents are the same person. There you go. Nicely put. So um, once uh, Tunnels and Trolls belong to WebSphere, I decided it was time to do more with Monsters, Monsters. And the project that came up was the best Jerry idea. And I wanted it to be more than a best Jerry. I wanted it to be really game related as well. So we have the world. We created a new world out of whole cloth. Yeah. Uh, we uh, went through various names and we came up with the unique name of Zimrala. That was all of you. You came up with that. Right. I just nixed the ones I didn't like until you came up with one. I said, that's a good one. Use that. <laughs> yeah, Steve's really good at nixing things. We call him Stevie Nix. Yeah. <laughs> we were originally going to call it Irving. And I said, no, no, we can't call the content Irving. And, and it was going to be uh, Griselda. And I said, no, no, it can't be that. And finally, came I up with Griselda. <laughs> well, uh, I took a name for a dreamland that I knew of that sounded sort of like that. And Steve says, has that name ever been used before? And he, I said, well, yes, once. And he says, you got to change it. <laughs> so I did. Good. And, and we have Zimrala, and I'm quite proud of it. Uh, Steve has really turned it into a very beautiful place. Um, uh, Steve is really good at taking my ideas and making them better. <laughs> I said, well, uh, that other game has lots of different worlds and places and things, and Tunnels and Trolls has, you know, all the dragon-shaped and animal-shaped continents and things. Uh, let's not do that. Let's have a world where there is only one continent, and it's the big one that covers the whole world, like Gondwana land, something in ancient Earth. Um, so we don't have to worry about, you know, places all over the thing. We've just got one really big one. There you go. Yeah, you said, let's, you know, we start talking about that. He said, Let, I want to do something like Pangea. You know, like a, at one time in ancient Earth, there was one continent. There wasn't all the, you know, there wasn't South America, North America, Africa, blah, blah. It was all one big thing. And that was that was what he said early on. You, you decided that. So, um, and then I, I did a map and I showed an outline of it on Facebook and everybody said, oh, it's Australia. And I was, I was so, I was, oh, no. <laughs> I said, okay, that's it. I, I want, I want, we're going to redo that. It's not going to be Australia. I don't want people to say it looks like Australia. So right. um, when Ken was, I think I've, we talked about this in the last interview. I'll just say real quick. When Ken was moving, uh, he found uh, all sorts of things in his archives. And one of them was, was a map that he had drawn back in the 70s, right? Um, after reading some H.P. Lovecraft stuff, he'd come up with right. kind of what a he thought the world would look, might look that world might look like, and I used that as a basis to create the map that you all know now, which is the which is you know in the um, it's been advertised in the Kickstarter and it's in the preview booklet, so you can really see what Zimral looks like. So that, that's how that came to be. And we're still developing it. So the Steve and I have a really good working uh, relationship in which one idea leads to another idea. Until we finally mutually agree on the best idea. Yeah, yeah, that's very true. And I've got a, small, I've got a small question for Ken right here, just just from my own personal curiosity. Do you remember when Steve came in and started working at Flying Buffalo? No. <laughs> <laughs> at Flying Buffalo, I was a librarian. I worked, right. you know, another building across the city. I would see that crew at Flying Buffalo sometimes uh, once a week sometimes once a month. I didn't really become involved with Flying Buffalo much until I took over editing uh, Rick's little gaming magazine that he used to promote his games uh, called Supernova. Okay. Uh, so I said, you know, this could be so much better. Um, he says, well, do you think you can do better, Ken? You be the editor. <laughs> so I did. I immediately started bringing in a decent artists to put... Uh, art on the front cover. Uh, we branched out instead of just spending all our time talking about his play by mail games, we talked about tunnels and trolls, we talked about other things. Um, we, uh, the dragon had just started up and I said, you know, we ought to really have something comparable to this if we want to stay in the gaming industry. And before too long, uh, I was able to talk Rick into it and we made Sorcerer's Apprentice. 
Yeah, that was that was a great magazine. It really was. I was uh, a first editor. I lasted about three issues, and then uh, this wonderful uh, artist that I had discovered named Liz Danforth uh, started working for Rick at uh, Flying Buffalo again because I made these introductions. There you go. Uh, Liz is supposed to be coming on the show soon too when her little convention's over. So I'm, I, she'll be glad to hear you talking about her. <laughs> and now, uh, and now, uh, Liz was there all the time, and she's very smart and uh, great artist, and um, had great ideas. Uh, I said, you know, we, we need a mascot. Liz said it ought to be a troll, uh, and she came up with the idea for Grimtooth. Yep. Yep, she, she drew the first Grimtooth. I just followed uh, in her, you know, I, I used what she'd drawn as my model to, to do all the other subsequent Grimtooth illustrations. One thing I'll say real quick is, you gotta remember the first time Ken met me, Flying Buffalo, I was a 17 year old store clerk, you know, and so he, I was hardly anyone that he, you know, I mean, I was, it was like meeting some kid at a McDonald's who serves you your fries. I mean, are right. you really gonna remember the kid? No. So, you know, that's, that's, it wasn't really until. What I remember we about, trap sports, about Steve was that I said, said, I'm going over to San Diego Comic Convention uh, one summer. Right. And Steve says, I'd like to go with you. Yeah. And I said, sure, why not? It was like 1989, I think. I don't know. Like it was, it Somewhere was pretty far back. Uh, but it was back in the time when uh, San Diego Comic Convention did not fill up the whole convention center. Right. They held it in. Uh, couple of small hotels in the middle of town. Uh, and uh, and Steve and I went over, we drove over together, we drove back together, we stayed yep. in a haunted hotel uh, while we were there. Yeah, I wonder if that hotel's still there. The, that place was so weird and old. I was. Man. Tell us about it. I've definitely got to hear about the haunted hotel. <laughs> I think it was called the Hotel San Diego. It was really old. It had been built in the, I think it had been there since the you know early 1900s, but they had expanded on it. So it was kind of divided into a bunch of different kind of buildings that had been built, had been merged together, you know, and it was like a- It like was, a, there was a window we had that looked like a, into a hollow yeah. court between uh, two three or buildings. four buildings. Yeah. Uh, and there was nothing in there. It, was there, there it, wasn't a, it wasn't a food court or anything down at the no. bottom. It was just an air hole in the middle of these yeah. uh, hotel, multi-story hotel buildings in the heart of San Diego. It looked like, like I say, it looked like uh, inside you, you're walking around. It would, it felt like you're walking around in a building from the 1920s. You know, uh, oh. it had that. Vibe. And there, oh. there was stories that there was ghosts in various rooms of people have been killed and all that stuff. And which is common with any old hotel. Right? You start getting those kind of stories. But uh, yeah, that was that was wild. Sounds like the shadow over In's mouth. <laughs> shadow over San. Oh. <laughs> anyway, so. Um, yeah, we'll jump back on to Zimrala. Let me uh, congratulate both of you. Uh, I haven't done so. I don't know why, but your Kickstarter has funded and has continued to grow. It That's does. right. We should shake hands here. Do that for sure. There we go. Yes, it worked. It worked. We funded, which is really, really wonderful news, and uh, we're very happy to have you made that, made that uh, got there. You know, that, that takes a lot of pressure off when you see that finally happen. Sure. Okay. We had a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun, actually. Uh, we we very quickly put together. We got the idea for the uh, the preview booklet. When we realized we were getting close, we said, you know, we ought to do. Let's let's let the preview booklet be something we give to everybody when when we reach our goal. And we reached the goal faster than we could get the preview book done. But we managed to pull it off and get it out to everybody just in time. So, um, well. The preview book is on Drive Through RPG. I've grabbed a copy of it. It looks awesome. Uh, but I got to know who listed it for $22,000 then marked it down to zero. I thought that was hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you know, the idea, know that. That's great. the idea was priceless. So I, I decided, you know, as long as we, we're going to have a, a list of, you know, uh, what our discounted price that we're giving it to you for and the original cost, <laughs> I, uh, I might as well put in something really high so they'll realize they're getting a great value. There you go. <laughs> uh, no, uh, Tunnels and Trolls was always meant to have a sense of humor. I told you, half the inspiration was the comic books. Half the comic books were Looney Tunes. <laughs> uh, right. Bugs Bunny and Daffy Duck are two of my personal heroes in life. 
Yeah. Bugs because he's cool. Daffy because he's nuts. <laughs> True. And you you're know, both, Ken. So I there am, you go. I am both. You know, um, <laughs> when you need to be cool in a situation, I'm Bugs Bunny. When you need somebody to come up with a wild inspiration or just to go off at a party to make a distraction so everybody else can escape, I can do that too. Um, I even surprise my friends once in a while. Do you remember the night uh, you guys told me, Ken, you shouldn't get so excited and so upset about things? Oh, and, the hell uh, and I scared. Don't ever do that again. I scared the table out of their underwear, you know, by showing them, you haven't seen me no, angry yet. And then I showed them what I would look like if I was, was angry. Like the Hulk. Uh, <laughs> like a troll, maybe. Fell out of their chairs. Anyway, so, uh, but yeah, that's the kind of person I am. You know, I'm. I have a lot of ideas. A lot of them never fly. You'll probably never know about the wonderful Saint Andre game invention ideas that uh, I could never provide convince anybody to do with me. Fungus and fruit bat. Fungus and fruit bat. <laughs> Uh, or you have something else? The card there. game. Well, actually, the one you know that I was uh, most uh, angry about was back when uh, Magic first came out, and we were at a convention there with uh, the guys who first brought out Magic. Uh, Peter Atkinson was there, and uh, he was uh, plugging it, and Garfield was there, and they were. Yeah, they were giving away samples and they were selling it hand over fist. And uh, I went back to uh, the Flying Buffalo booth and said, you know, Rick, we ought to do a kind of a game using trading cards and Tunnels and Trolls characters and weapons and things. I said, uh, I've already made a card dungeon. I can play grip. I've got 100 cards of dungeon rooms that I've made up and just written a brief description on. Uh, and I'll just shuffle those up and lay a bunch of them out face down and let people go into them, you know, randomly. Uh, we could do that. It would sell. Rick says, do you know how much it costs to make <laughs> decks of cards? It's yeah. really impractical. Meanwhile, he's making decks of cards hand over fist for nuclear, nuclear war. war. Yeah. Right. Um, uh, so I was always a little pissed about that. Later on, um, other gamers came up with the same idea. Tile that you'd lay out to play your fantasy role-playing games on. Uh, but yeah, mine never got done. Oh. Well, this is getting done. We're getting Monster Area of Zamrala done. And, oh, yeah, for sure. It was like I told the audience uh, with Kickstarter. I don't do Kickstarter a lot, but I know you two, and you have, you, you've just done spectacular Kickstarters, and I don't know anybody who was not be, just over the moon from what they got out of it. Well, I'm glad to hear it. Glad to hear it. Um, we are working as we speak. We constantly uh, come up with new stuff uh, all the time. You know, as we're, as we're working on this project, we suddenly go, "Hey, what about this?" And, yeah, I saw uh, some new stretch goals announced today. Today? Today? <laughs> well, oh, maybe. Uh, you, well, I think you posted it today. The big stretch goals. Yeah, we 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 added color pages to the book. Right. Uh, our first stretch goal. We're going to add at least eight pages uh, when we get 25. We're almost there now. We're very close to that first stretch goal. On the second one, we left it up to the, the fans. And uh, they're voting on in the comments section and uh, update number six, I think it is. And they can say whether they want uh, a set of cards uh, of monsters on one side and their stats on the back, or if they want to add an, even more color pages to the book. So. So that's our next, next uh, stretch goal. And we're waiting to see uh, how that comes out. I think right now, um, most people have voted for more pages, but th that could easily change. It's not that big a difference. That's because you're not listening to my ideas. <laughs> yeah, go for the cards, guys. Great for solo play. <laughs> um, uh -huh. Yeah, that's true. Um, my, Steve hasn't heard this yet, uh, but I want to have, you know, uh, a video featuring um, all of our humanoid kindreds uh, doing uh, uh, dancing. Uh, I want dancing, dancing goblin girls, dancing elves, uh, dancing trolls. Uh, these would be cards? What would these be? What do you mean? It's a video. Yeah. We'll get Michael Benson to do the video for it. And we will uh, animate uh, these things, and it won't cost us anything more to produce it. We'll just pay him for making a video one time, <laughs> and we'll have a great video that we can show people of, you know, how much fun it is to uh, go adventuring on Zimrala. 
I keep drifting that way, so I keep moving the camera. <laughs> uh, I I can still see myself in it. I know. But I'm trying to. I heard good. But you know, I have a feeling this is another one of my ideas that's not going to get uh, funded here. Well, we do have a dancing demon. It's that, we, that's we, one we, of the and That's a start. That was a start. You know? That's a start. We've got a dancing demoness. Now let's have uh, dancing uh, bull girls. Bull girls? <laughs> yeah. Uh, bulls art. The, you know, oh, they're oh. male and female. Right, okay. Um, we can put them in a bikini and have them doing oh, uh, a cow dance. You can cut all this out of the interview. <laughs> no, it's got to stay on. This is great. <laughs> Why would we like to just do something different? This has always been one of my great impetus in life. Do something different. Do something that nobody's ever done before. Um, why? Why have they never done it before? Because it was probably a bad idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's not going to stop me. <laughs> no, it never has. <laughs> um, let me interject. I, I uh, and, and a related, a, a related story to something different. One of the things that we're doing in this book that is definitely different. Um, hasn't been done in, in Tunnels of Trolls. It hasn't been done in Monsters, Monsters before, but we're, we're introducing a whole new um, line of, uh, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna call them, they're not really kindreds, but a whole new kindred, uh, but let's just say player character type that you can play that's not been in Tunnels and Trolls or Monsters, Monsters before, and that's demons. Oh. All right. So we've got a whole set of different Demons that we've worked up, demon uh, that that range from uh, very small little impish ones and go all the way up to the arch demons. In fact, why don't you? Uh, can you go through the? Sure, I'll I'll pull up some artwork you sent me. Give me one second here. We'll pull it up. I think it starts off with the. Uh, it looks like a trilobite in the ocean. If that's okay. Yeah, do do the one after that. Actually, go with, okay. with the capture. Let me. Uh, okay. Yeah, that's it's an as yet unnamed sea creature. Oh, that's the last one. We got have you got the one with with uh, Tenmer? Oh well, we'll just yeah keep going. There. Okay, so which one you want? <laughs> no, the other way. You were fine. Okay, with the trapping beast. Okay, so that is um, Tenmer fighting a capture bug, and it started out as that was going to be a monster in the book. That, right. that creature is simply designed to by demons to capture people. You, it, it has tendril-like limbs and it wraps around somebody and it, it basically sort of hog ties them. Um, but, you know, Tenmer is one of the characters in the book, but she's also a character type that you can play now, which has right. not been in Tunnels and Trolls or Monsters, Monsters. We didn't have demons um, as player character types. Right. That was something we never really liked. He didn't, he didn't, he was a little bit you know, he wasn't he wasn't comfortable with that. So we've got them there, and then we also have the uh, uh, what what do you call them? The imps, the imps, the zim, what? the littler ones. Uh, oh, the yeah, the imps. Yeah. So that's another that's another lower. Those are smaller demons. They're kind of like imps, really. They're more like Maxwell's demons, right? You know, uh, Maxwell was a physicist who postulated that there were uh, tiny invisible creatures who made molecules move around. Sure. <laughs> when you heated them up, the molecules would move faster. There you go. But when you cooled them down, molecules would move slower. That's because the imps who were moving them, Maxwell's demons, uh, uh, moved faster when it was hot and slower when it was cold. <laughs> so let's go to the next one. The next one is another female demon you should have. Let me see here. Oh, uh, we got some dragons. Uh, there we go. Yeah. Now this this is two and this is interesting for two reasons. This is an, an an unpublished Carver illustration. Rob Carver did this illustration back in like 1977. Right. And it's never been published. And so, with his permission, I took it and I toned it, and I made the female character a demoness. Um, so she is. She is the same type of character as Tenmer, effectively, but that's just uh, shows you the range of what a female demoness might look like. Uh, and this is the first time this illustration has ever been shown uh, anywhere. Um, and it's, it's, it's something that Ken found in his archives. It was an illustration. And I said, oh, that's beautiful. We got to use it. And uh, behind her, of course, is one of the Zimralian portals. 
So she's probably a guard. So that's another type character type you could play. So let's go to the next one. There should be one that shows a regular demon that says uh, hell froze over. Oh, well. oh, I know where that's at. There we go. Yeah, now this is another exclusive. This is an illustration of Liz Danforth that we're using in the book. And uh, this is an interesting history. This was originally, Liz drew this as a t-shirt design for the Monsters Monsters t-shirt. And it was actually made and printed as a t-shirt. There were actually probably probably 36 to 60 copies of that ever made. Oh, don't tell me, uh, they don't have to find one. one of the rarest illustrations. Um, we got her permission to use this. And it is uh, is one of the printed pieces to show uh, a demon. And the idea of Hell's Frozen Over is because now we have demons that you could play in in uh, you know one of the Tunnels and Trolls related games, Monsters Monsters. So uh, you'll see the full illustration in the book. This is just a little bit of it. So there you go. It's the head. Another exclusive. Yeah. And then, then the next one, if you want, which is uh, the Arch Demon. Uh, Arch Demon. Here we go. That's no, nope. <laughs> there. So that's an arch demon. That's an upper. Uh, that's one of the higher level demons you can play. Uh, very powerful. Uh, very dangerous. Um, extremely strong. I would be the equivalent of like a. It'd be like if rolling up a paragon type character, I suppose. You know, this is really. These are really powerful. For uh, the power gamers. Yeah, for the power gamers. So they're very powerful, very dangerous, and. These are characters that the GM can run against you, or you could conceivably even play a character like this. So, and yeah, I wanted an Archie demon, you know, to go along with the Betty and Veronica demon. That's assist, right. But, there you go. Uh, but you know, somehow, that's just not going to happen. And then one other picture I'd like to show is the one of the uh, the Anticorn, the horse. So this has a really interesting uh, story. Um, Ken, tell them about the art that you found that you sent, you showed me, and I said, ooh, that makes me think of something. Um, I found, you know, long, long ago, I did a lot of other things besides tunnel controls. One afternoon, um, after we'd sat around playing board games all afternoon, uh, my immediate circle of friends, Liz and Bear and Tommy Williams and uh, Rob Carver, Rob Carver uh, we were all playing board games one afternoon in Phoenix, and we were, got to talking about Roger Zelazny's Amber series. And I said, you know, we could play that. I could run a game in which, you know, everybody took part of a, a prince or princess of Amber, and uh, we could have a game. And they immediately called me on it and said, oh, oh yeah? Do it. <laughs> so I did it. Um, and uh, Rob was our main artist at the time, Rob and Liz. And uh, Rob drew this crazy whacked out picture of a unicorn and showed it to me. Uh, and I used it to make a membership card for people who were joining the Ember game. Uh, and I totally forgot about it for 50 years. And then uh, I found it while I was moving and I showed it to Steve. And Steve says, I have something like that. <laughs> yeah. uh, I call it the Anticorn. Um, and uh, we decided to put an anticorn in as uh, a demon of uh, a different variety. You know, demons don't all have to be humanoids. Yeah, the, the anticorn is from my comic series, and um, he was, uh, there was a character that was, uh, you know, it was an anticorn, and basically it's, you know, he's bright red, and he has a horn, uh, and red glowing eyes or yellow glowing eyes, and he's basically the opposite of an of a unicorn. So uh, I don't know. I, I tried looking around. And there's no such thing I could find. I'm sure there probably are hell horses or something. But anyway, that's I, one of the creatures we're going to see in this book, and he will be really fun. This uh, Anticorn would actually make a really fun player character because you're an intelligent being with some magic ability and some strength, but you're basically trapped in a horse's body. So it would make a really fun character to play, uh, you know, in, in, a, in an RPG. Sure, it reminds me of the Tunnels and Trolls Rogue, basically, you know. What do you mean? Uh, that it can either, you know, it has, uh, it has some magical ability, but not necessarily the full ability, but it also has some physical abilities as well. You're kind right. of a rogue. True. Yeah, that's true. Yes, you're right, a rogue. Yes, you're absolutely right. So anyway, that'll be another really... And that's that's an example we were talking just a few minutes ago about how we work well together and how even now we're coming up with ideas. We just 
the anticorn whole thing just came up about a week or so ago. Yeah. I mean, you know, so within that time, uh, I mean, we got some a really cool piece of art done. And Ken wrote up the description. I wrote a little bit of it. And Ken wrote up a description for it. And we made it and we put it in the preview book. Boom, just like that. And it's like, you know, it's another really cool creature character that you can play. So. I agree. Okay, yeah. I think that's it for the art for now. Uh, okay, if, uh, let me get up here. Yeah, anything else will be, I can get right back to it, so. But yeah, I, I, thought, hmm? I thought it'd be fun to show off some of, the, some of the new art and some things that hadn't been seen yet. Oh, yeah, I, I really appreciate it. I know the audience will, too, because we have a whole lot of fans, you know, that watch here because uh, you've got out and put us into the Tunnels and Trolls community big time, so. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're trying to reach out to the old fans and the new fans at the same time. Since the book's for any role-playing system, uh, you know, we're, we're hoping to catch a lot of other new players as well who uh, see this book as a useful thing for whatever game they're playing, whether it's Dungeons Dragons, Pathfinder, or GURPS, so. Well, I, fact, I think the fact that you're putting so many brand new, unique monsters into the mix, you know, I, you don't see a lot of that with role-playing games anymore. They're sort of just recycling the same things and maybe updating rules here and there. But uh, I'm very excited for it because I'm seeing stuff that nobody's ever seen before. That's great. That, that's our goal, definitely. This is Steve's uh, obsession. <laughs> now, when we started it, I was just going to go through all the list of monsters that we had done in uh, tunnels and trolls and uh, rewrite the descriptions a little bit but uh, we very quickly got away from that because Steve was saying we want to show them new things we have a new world we want to show them new monsters and now it's getting really hard to put any <laughs> of the old traditional ones in one of the things we're doing in this kickstarter is allowing uh, supporters to create their own monster type. Uh, right. And they can create something new and original, or if they want something that's more traditional, because they paid to create their own monster type, we'll put that more traditional thing in. Yeah. Um, creatures come to Zimrala from all over the metaverse. Uh, they come from other universes, other worlds, other times, um, different places of the same world. Uh, the top of Zimrala, where it's all icy and frozen, is very, very different from the bottom of Zimrala. Um, Definitely. So, um, the but there are things from all places and times. One of our guys uh, wanted to do a kind of a wolf troll. Now, we don't ever really mention wolf tro trolls in Tunnels and Trolls. There's, uh, it's implied that they might exist because there are flesh trolls of different sorts. But it's not a big thing for us wolf trolls, you know, like it is with uh, Hackmaster or something. Sure. Uh, he wanted to do his own take on the wolf troll. Uh, and he paid for it, so he gets to do it. Um, I s read through his description. It's a very well done character creation thing, except for the fighting part at the very end. Oh, yeah? Oh. And uh, he said, well, it's Deadliness 7. Uh, it can regenerate uh, one dice, D6, one dice worth of uh, hit points um, for every turn that it's not in combat. Uh, it, each of its claws is worth three dice. Uh, I wrote him a letter this morning and said, you know, you want it to be one of the deadliest creatures that are available out there, and you made it punier than my ordinary... Uh, 50 monster rated uh, basic baby troll. <laughs> so uh, so then I, I showed him the math. If you want a really powerful uh, deadly monster, it will have a really big monster rating. Right. Uh, Deadliness 7 that you asked for has a monster rating that starts at 2,000 and runs to 5,000. Oh, wow. Now 2,000 means that the character rolls 201 dice and gets 1,000 combat ads right. for every turn. It's a Godzilla class monster. Yeah. Oh, it's a game about monsters. There can be kaiju. They don't have to be all Lon Chaney, the Wolfman. True. Uh, they don't have to be little things that some knight on a horse can beat. 
They can be unbeatable, world-shaking things like thing from Cloverfield, you know? Yeah, we, we had a guy named Earl who, uh, he bought an island, a couple of islands, and he populated them and he came up, he also bought a monster and he came up with the idea of tiger men. So he's got a whole island of tiger men. So that'll be kind of fun. People can, yeah. you know. Soon you'll have a wear troll. Customize these things their own use. So, so, uh, so, you know, I, I found the math. They said, you know, you, your monster, as you've described him, could be a, as big as a small hill, uh, and uh, have a monster rating of two thousand. And he, uh, when he regenerates uh, uh, during a fight because he's a troll, uh, he gets uh, two hundred uh, points back per turn. If you're going to fight this thing, you have to come in with high-level wizards and yeah. gods. Yeah, no, that's for sure. These well, are, but things are, there's an idea have, for a... That's, that's the important thing. I want a game where you can play uh, a deity, in effect, if you wish to. Hmm. Uh, it might be an evil deity. Um, <laughs> it might be a good one. It might be a good one. Um, you can play monsters that are Godzilla-sized or bigger. Uh, or you can play, you know, something the size of your cat. Uh, we want the full range of possibilities for role-playing in our new uh, Zimrala expansion here. So we're not only giving you a full range of monsters, uh, of uh, more than 10 different types of intelligent uh, creatures, but uh, giving you a full range of powers to go with them, and we're le leaving it to the creative ability of game masters and players out there to make it work. Because I don't believe in forcing everybody into my mold. You know, you don't have to play the kind of game you play. You don't have to play the kind of game that Gary plays or Dave or anybody else played. You should play your game. And make it work. Does that make sense to you? Of yes, course. Doctor? Yeah, because I've always looked at role playing games. Everybody's got their your table's unique to everybody else's. I don't care how much of a stickler for rules you are. You're going to have house rules. You're going to have changes just to the uniqueness of your imagination. So. Fair enough, and that's what makes it fun. There right. You the storytelling, yeah. is what it's about. It it it's been a lot of fun. It's really been a lot of fun creating a new world from scratch like we have and uh, connecting ideas and bridging things. And it, it's really exciting. It, it's, it's real exciting to see what, how the world develops and, and what, how, what people's reactions are to it ultimately. So, uh, and where it goes, it's, it's kind of like a whole new ball game in a way. So kind of exciting. But it's old school. <laughs> well, yeah, it's, it's definitely cool. I'm excited, you know, it's, it's, it's great to see a breath of fresh air being breathed in. So uh, we've got, I think we've got about 12 days left, you know, 13 days left. So we're going to continue to have exciting uh, updates and some contests and uh, we'll be previewing more uh, exciting unseen art. And, uh, you know, uh, we'll see how the stretch goals go. And then uh, we'll, we'll, uh, we're going to do standees, as you guys know about that. There's a big, giant two-sided map we're going to do. Um, one side of the map is going to be a miniature scale version of a of a temple that you can explore and you can use the standees figures or miniatures with uh we've never really done one of those before so that way it'll be kind of a you know it'll be kind of a use the first way. for us yeah and then the opposite side will be the map of zamrala so you, you know you can Excellent. so you have the world and you have a close-up of a specific location that you can play with so uh you know and we'll see what else comes up as we go along with this thing it's depending on how far much further we get so now um, I've, I've come up with a new stretch goal while we've been sitting here thinking, and I've decided that uh, we should put an ultimate stretch goal in for uh, mm -hmm. update number seven or eight. Eight might be better because uh, eight's the number of chaos. Uh, uh, the ultimate stretch goal for the Zimrala game will be holographic projections of all the monsters <laughs> in the games. And we will do this for you if we reach a million dollars. There you go. There we go. <laughs> so uh, we've got two weeks to uh, get it up to a uh, million dollars. And if you do that, by God, I'll make holographic images of all of our monsters appear. <laughs> hey, it can be done. Meanwhile, we'll, we will keep, we'll make you a really great book. 
We think you're all really gonna enjoy it. I think the fact that you've got a preview of it now so you can kind of see, get a taste of what it's gonna be like, um, you know, uh, and you know that we're well on our way. So um, really looking forward to, to being able to show this to you all when the time comes, so. Uh, yeah, I will, uh, I will definitely tell everybody you got two weeks to get in. I'm going to drop a link to the Kickstarter below our video here and the uh, preview book on drive through Go check out both, guys. Don't miss out on this. And we'll, when we get the interview done, we'll put that as, we'll make that an update so everybody can easily find it, too. So Excellent, excellent. That'll be great. Do you have any final words, Ken? No, I don't have any final words, and there's a reason for that. <laughs> what? I'm not ever going to stop. Oh, well, there you go. There you go. <laughs> Well, I have time on interviews and things like this, but yeah, listen, fans, listen, world. My goal is to outlive all of you and to keep doing more creative things uh, until the sun goes nova. There you go. And trolls are immortal. So do you have any doubt that I can do it? I don't have any doubt. You're the troll godfather. How could I doubt you? There you go. That's what I like to do. Uh, there'll be some extra minestrone in your uh, gruel tonight. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> any, any other questions, uh, Deathstalker? No, uh, I know we'll have both of you back on at some point, pr probably pretty soon. Uh, you, you know, it's been amazing to have you on, uh, Steve, and of course, you can, and I look forward to seeing you both as uh, soon as you're ready to come back. All right. This has been really great, and we appreciate it. And uh, Good say everybody, uh, keep pledging and we'll keep making monsters. Thank you for the chance to reach out to the uh, wider world of uh, video watchers, Deathstalker. I appreciate the work that you do and the work that other uh, podcasters and uh, video makers and video channel owners like you have. And um, if you uh, ever feel, if you feel like you can share the video, I have a channel too. Uh, it doesn't have very much on it. Uh, I think the last video we put in for the uh, DTNT. Oh, that was a while. Kickstarter. Man. That was in 2015. Yeah. Right. All right. Very good. All well, right. Thank you, Deathstalker. We really appreciate the opportunity. Okay. It's been a great interview. Well, we'll see you guys. Time. We'll see you guys next time here on the Random Encounter Show. All right. You bet. Thanks a lot. We'll see you next time. See you in Zimrala. See you in Zimrala. Join the monster revolution. Yes. Bye-bye. Hey, this is Dev Stalker 5. If you like the Random Encounter Show, make sure you're subscribed to our channel so that you'll be the first to know when we upload a new episode. Want to support the show? Head over to Questing Table Studio on Facebook. Let us help you bring your table to life with miniature painting services and terrain. 